Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Guys, I'm out here on the lake. It is a cold November day, but I've got a special treat for you. I'm gonna show you a bait that I've had now for several months and I've been playing around with, but I could not talk about, could not share with you guys until now. And that's this guy right here. This is the Berkeley Finisher. This is a, uh, I don't even know what category you call it. It's basically a glide bait underwater, but it is the most hard thrashing bait I've ever seen underwater. When I say glide bait, I mean this thing zips back and forth multiple feet at a time. It is pretty ridiculous at how cool this thing is under the water. There's a bunch of different sizes, a bunch of different ways to use it. I honestly feel like this is a lure that we're just tapping into a completely new category of bait. And I think we're gonna hear a lot more about it, but I wanna get out in the water, show you a little bit about how it works, how I like to use it, and how I think it's gonna really transform the game of hard baits. I think this is a completely new category that is just getting tapped into. So let's get out on the water, let's catch a few fish, let's show you how I like to use it. They like this thing. And nice large mouth. He's got that thing gone. Look at that one. Oh, I don't want to get wet. Uh, got that thing double hooked. This is such a good alternative to your traditional jerk bait. I mean, that's a three and a quarter, probably. You are so cold, fish. I don't want to hold you anymore. It's a. It's basically just a super hard thrashing jerk bait. Uh, the finisher just. It just darts so aggressively that it creates those extremely sharp turns that generates reaction strikes. You know, I'm all about reaction strikes. And this is one of the best baits that I've seen in a long time at creating those really aggressive jerks with such little rod movement. It's just little pops of the rod. And that bait is just zinging back and forth. And even in really cold water, those fish want this finisher it's a it's an impressive impressive category of bait I don't you know I don't want to call it like a glide bait a hard glide bait because it really in my opinion is much more than a glide bait Boy, you are a jumping cold water bass here. And another good one. These are big bass for this lake, guys. And he's got a T-bone too. Look at both hooks. Oh God, you are gonna be, you are gonna be such a player in my arsenal. You had both hooks. I finished you. Another nice one. You gonna jump for us again? I'll tell you, one of the cool things with this bait, I gotta get the ice out of my rods. One of the cool things about this bait is the, uh, the versatility of the retrieve. 
you know and i think that's one of the things we're gonna have to see over time and really learn <clears throat> you know it's it's a lot like a jerk bait you're gonna have to figure out the cadence that those fish want and there's a couple of things you got to recognize so i actually prefer having my rod tip pointed up <clears throat> and that just kind of helps keep the bait at the level i want you can definitely work it down if you want but i feel like i have better control with my rod tip pointed up not necessarily at 12 o'clock but just up uh pointed you know away from the water but you got to recognize so if i go longer sweeps my bait is darting many many feet if i want to switch to just tiny little twitches that bait's walking the dog real tight you know and then at the same time if you were to just let the bait free fall on a controlled tight line you get you get shimmy out of the bait on the fall kind of like a spy bait it's got a little tail wag to it so you really want to figure out what those fish want you know it, it is a fast sinking bait so if you're talking about fishing like casting way up here it's only three four foot of water at that point you're gonna have to work it relatively faster to keep it from riding on the bottom and getting caught up but as i work it down the brake line and what i'm trying to do is work it along the brake line it's just a matter of trying to uh keep it at the depth that i want the water column and figure out do they want a wide slash do they want it continuously moving do i pause it like a jerk bait and let them hit it on the fall it's one of those things that from day in my experience it's a day-to-day even you know even hour to hour at times or spot to spot it's just a matter of figuring out what those fish want but you know this little guy has such good slashing motion it is really incredible and i'll show some underwater footage of like the tanks uh of the test tank so you can see it and see exactly what i'm talking about but is when you see that you recognize the power of the of the reaction strike that this thing's going to have and it was created i think more with forward facing sonar in mind but i want to point out guys still got no graphs and i'm fishing it like i would in uh, a traditional jerk bait in areas you know where you don't need forward facing you can still catch fish without forward facing sonar and this bait even though it's being marketed that way there are so many opportunities for this to be used in oh, so many different technique styles for multiple different species i can tell you walleye love this thing i already caught a pike on it uh you know i did a lot of my field tests this summer on shallow flats with smallmouth and the smallmouth it drives them nuts it drives them nuts but as you can see we're catching cold water largemouth it's 40 degrees and we're catching some really nice largemouth on this lake this is a a lake tournaments take 12 pounds to win and i've got two fish that are you know three three pounds or better i mean those are the right type of fish in this body of water and that's what i've seen everywhere i've gone it's generated big bites here's a good tip for you if you're fishing and you're freezing over you can see that probably i got ice in all my guides you probably can see that every one of my guides is that way just stick your rod tip in the water get all your your guides in the water for like a second and that'll completely just melt out as you can see it's all gone it's amazing how quick it happens you know you might have to do it every five six seven casts when it's really cold out but it still works really well Good one. Chunky. They've all got it so good. Whole thing in its mouth. Nice fat winter bass. Probably 
you're pushing close to two pounds. I finished him. In the words of Mortal Kombat. Not a giant. Not a bad one. Come here. Again, both hooks back to back cast. hanging around the rope. There's a bunch of little dinkers down there. And they all just have it so good. Three casts in a row. Four casts in a row. Can we make it five casts in a row? Yep, we did. We've got a school of little guys. Can we make it six casts in a row?
I'll take five casts any day of the week. Another decent one. Not a giant, but another nice one. Got both hooks in them again. The old finisher. Well, I think you've seen in the little bit of time we've been out what this finisher can do. The Berkeley finisher right there, guys. This little guy catches catches them man i don't know what else to tell you uh it should be available now i'll put a link to tackle warehouse uh a little bit more information on it though it is a it is a fast sinking bait so it's one that moves back and forth but i want you to just remember that it's one of those baits that is so new that we really don't fully understand all the different ways to use it so I'll continue to be talking about this bait quite a bit because I really do feel like this is going to be something that I have in my uh, arsenal all year. I mean, this is the reaction that I've gotten out of fish in the little bit of time I've been able to use it. The second half of this year really just has me excited to throw it in a lot of different applications throughout the country. Very few fish have seen it and it just seems to be getting those reaction strikes. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you go pick up one or two of these and you figure out how to put it to work on your local lake. And uh, if you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. New video coming out tomorrow.